Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about CD Projekt's financial statements. Financial statements tell you about the earning power and the financial position of a company, how their cash is handled, who are they related to, how much do they rely on important clients. It's important for a content creator like me to care because the more money and the healthier CD Projekt is, and the better their Gwent game is doing, the better content they can create. The longer they can make content for Gwent. The longer and better content they create, the better my content will become as a result. I can't, if they have a great game, me making a video on it will also look good. They also want me to do well because the better I do, the better Gwent will be, at least by a little degree, since I'm just, you know, a drop in the water when it comes to content creators. For game, uh, for players like you, you want to know that CD Projekt Red can afford to keep making Gwent content, and good Gwent content is that, and the better they do, uh, the better the content you can expect in the future, the more you want to invest in playing Gwent, buy more cards or whatever. It also gives you a little bit of indicators of ways you can support Gwent without uh, give it, throwing a bunch of money at it. And we'll get to that later. So we're going to go through this. We're going to skip pages that are not really relevant to the average Gwent player. But I'm going to focus a lot on the things that you guys might actually find interesting. So we, we have like Siri on the front cover. This is the um, July 1st to September 30th. Uh, consolidated financial statement for CD Projekt Red's capital group. Th that means they have a bunch of subsidiaries. You might be surprised by some of the subsidiaries you see here. They report in Polish uh, monies and they have a little bit of Euro. They sometimes explain things in US currency, but that's rare. This is their um, table of contents. You can actually click on any of these. If you want to go into the description of this video, you can follow along and click on these if you want to. I'm going to skip a bunch of the financial statements because I don't think you guys are really going to be interested on that. We're going to go straight to the subsidiaries. So CD Projekt SA is the parent entity. That means they own everything below this. GOG, the, the service where we can buy games and play Gwent on, CD Projekt owns that. They also have this group. I believe this group kind of does development and support functions for GOG. It's just a smaller thing. It's obviously um, situated only in Poland. Uh, they have a brands group and an incorporated group. And these, again, they're just doing different functions if, as far as I'm aware. As a player, you will care a little bit that the CD project is a going concern. That means they'll have their doors open in the foreseeable future, uh, at least through a 12-month th period. That's kind of conservative. I, I, I'm i pretty sure CD Projekt Red's doing really nice and that they'll exist for more than 12 months. But again, this is a financial statement, so it has to be conservative when it explains things. Financial statements are they can't have any false or misleading information and they often take the most conservative thing that they can say. This financial statement only guarantees that the company will exist for the next 12 months. It's pretty clear that they will exist more than that, but this statement only goes so far. It's not going to interpret things for the next 50 years. That would be too much work. Uh, we're going to skip this. You guys don't really need to know about the changes in their uh, accounting principles. Uh, uh, this was audited. These are audited financial statements. That means that you can usually trust them. You don't want an Enron happening. Not that many of you guys know what Enron is. Uh, when I say that, I, I mean, I've talked to people who don't know about Enron. I know about it because Enron is a bit was a company that existed very close to me and led to extremely important legislation. So here's another interesting thing. You might now notice that CD Projekt Red has been separated from GOG and is considered an activity group. You will now notice that their revenue 
is much larger than GOG. If we go back to the subsidiaries, uh, and we'll look at it again later, uh, GOG sells like 1, 7, more than 1,700 games from over 400 developers. It's selling a ton of games. CD Projekt Red is not selling that many games. They have like two, three, four, five, six games, and most of those games are not selling all that much. Some of those games are like free. And they're making way more money than GOG. How can they do that? Well, one, they're not selling everything on GOG. CD Projekt Red has a game that's extremely popular. Uh, even the very popular games on GOG are more are being sold better at things like uh, on websites like Steam and uh, GameStop. GOG is really small in the digital distribution market. Uh, there's other weird things in here. Uh, I find the weird, the weirdest thing for me is the uh, deferred revenues, and this is the only category where GOG is going to be so much bigger than CD Projekt Red, and it just has to deal with the way you have to account for digital sales, as opposed to kind of, you know, if you give a bunch of, you know, the rights to publish, and make CDs to somebody, or you sell a bunch of game discs to, for an Xbox to um, GameStop, you can just recognize that revenue right away. But GOG digital distribution, they're going to have to defer it, which means they, have, they don't get to recognize that revenue right away. It's, not, it's still only like 2000 so it's not huge. And it has a lot to do with like the fact that you have a library on GOG of all the games you play. That's a service that they have to give you for like indefinitely. So the money you pay for that game is being spread out. A little bit of that is being spread out over the life of the indefinite library you have. This is all just highly technical accounting information. You don't. None of you guys probably care about that, so I'm not going to go into it anymore. Uh, was there anything else I wanted to? deal with oh yeah uh, intangible assets are like software obviously if you're developing new software and stuff you're going to have a lot more than the company that isn't really developing too much GOG has some development projects but CD Project Red has like a seven million dollar loan from the Polish government just to make realistic cities and uh, in their cyberpunk 2077 yeah so of course, they're acquiring software and stuff to be piled on to their development projects. And I think that um, uh, international financial reporting standards have different ways of handling research and development than America, does, I mean, like the United States does. And so these numbers are a lot larger in Europe than they are in the United States. Okay, here's some interesting things as well. Uh, this kind of talks about their major video games. You'll notice that under major video games, they include the, uh, <laughs> well, they're talking about the current portfolio. So they're not gonna include things like Gwent here because it's not, it's the game isn't really released, especially when this thing comes out, which is September. GOG, on the other hand, will, uh, this is where we get our 1700 video games, over 400 developers. Uh, you get a cool thing about the DRM, DRM free model. So DRM is digital rights management. It's a software that lots of developers put in their video games to prevent piracy. It's important to note that DRM sometimes causes a game to run slower or with a lower quality and that it's can be expense, uh, it is an expense to the developer to create DRM software and that expense goes down to the consumer. So they're paying for DRM to be in their game. Even though it does not help their game run any better, it's not something that they a consumer actually wants in it. Uh, CD Projekt doesn't like the DRM model, probably uh, maybe as a result of their own personal values or because they want to compete as the DRM-free 
developer. So the consequence of doing that is your there will be a there will be a lot of developers who do not want to publish on GOG solely because they can't put DRM in their game. If you can't buy a you know like let's say a Horizon Zero Dawn on GOG when at release. On, uh, then you'll just go to a different digital distributor. You're pushing out a lot of AAA games this way. And again, GOG is kind of small, but if DRM becomes such a huge issue, GOG will pick up the slack as the non or the DRM free, you know, distributor. So that's kind of cool. Here we're going under CD Project Red. CD Project Red has a bunch of subcategories that they can talk about when they're just uh, significant accomplishments and shortcomings in each activity. So Gwent is their biggest activity that they were focused on in their financial statements back in September, and we're seeing a lot more about Gwent than we are seeing about CG Project. I mean Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, Cyberpunk is still a ways off. They're not doing too much marketing for it, as opposed to Gwent, where they're making commercials right now. So they talk about um, the game shows they went to, and they were really happy about the game shows. So if you're a player, and you want to support Gwent, but not with a bunch of money, if you go all to these things like Gamescon and Colm, or uh, the Brazil game show, and uh, Paulo, or Moscow, or whatever however you pronounce that like 25,000 participants they're looking at these numbers and they're basing their decisions and investors are basing their decisions on how many people are showing up to these events and this is a way for all of us to support Quint is just go to these events watch stuff uh, they even talk about like the servers must die event like how many people went to that I couldn't actually do anything during the servers must die event because uh, this isn't really here, but NVIDIA helps CG Project develop games and I use an AMD graphics card and almost always the first release of their product, the AMD does not work, but the NVIDIA does and my personal belief is that NVIDIA is sabotaging AMD every time they make a game with CG Project Red. Uh, well, that aside, uh, going back, so they talk about the number of people who were in the Servers to Die event. Several hours, and I've even launched before the launch of the closed beta. Yeah, Pe they were talking about how excited people were. Uh, they, uh, they also talk about PC Gamer, so whenever a major outlet publishes an article about it especially if it's like the front page like if game informer had the front page gwent that would be a maybe a big enough event for it to appear in this kind of section in their financial statements both editions yeah uh, uh. It's also important to note that GOG handles all the matchmaking and networking for Gwent the Witcher card game. Even though CG, CG Project Red is developing it, GOG is handling the networking and uh, matchmaking stuff for Gwent. And I, that appears in a slightly different section in this paper. Uh, well, this statement. Yeah. This is cute, but we'll get to that. They're, they only talk about the Game of the Year edition. So in the last quarter, this is pretty much, you know, they're done with all the DLC. The D last DLC was Blood and Wine. I believe that came out in May. So around July to September, they came out with the Game of the Year edition, which had all the DLC in it, I believe. Uh, they talk about winning some awards. So they got an award for Blood and Wine and being the studio of the year. That's kind of big. This stuff right here is now we're going back to GOG. Some of the significant events for GOG. 
they talk about some classic video games. You can understand why all these games are not uh, are without DRM. They're yeah, for the first time ever without DRM restrictions. Dragon Age Origins, great game, just very old. There probably is a bunch of pirated versions already online. So a DRM free version of Dragon Ball, I mean Dragon Age Origins is uh, not a surprise. Dead Space is also pretty old, but I don't think it's as old as Origins. Mirror's Edge, uh, it's a good time for Mirror's Edge to release something because you know you want to promote Mirror Edge 2. This is kind of depressing. Uh, the hottest launch of the season was No Man's Sky, one of the most anticipated games of 2016. I, I would actually say that this is not a full disclosure, and if I was the auditor for this, I would say that you need to restate this to also include the fact that No Man's Sky, while being the hottest launch of the season, also saw, saw significant backlash. So... Most you notice how the language is most anticipated. They're only talking about the launch. They're not talking about the aftermath of it. And the aftermath happened by September, by the release of this financial statement. The aftermath was no. So that should be included. If you're going to make say something positive about, you know, just look at the positive. This is too biased for a financial statement, in my opinion. Even if it's, you know, this is supposed to all, this is shortcomings are supposed to be included in this section and they are excluding that and I think that's that's an issue of disclosure here if you don't know about No Man's Sky don't worry about it it's just a game that flopped hard uh, they talk about Shadow Wars 2 uh, crossplay they're also talking about networking features between uh, Steam and crossplay alright well with Steam, because there's a way to transfer games from Steam into GOG without causing problems, and that's part of their mar uh, way of promoting this platform. So you don't feel like you're losing something or having to open up s multiple different programs to play the games you like. Just transfer them all over to GOG, and then you just have them there as well. I don't know if Steam allows that backwards, but yeah, it's okay. Uh, I'm thinking if there's anything here. Uh, they're trying to attract new users to GOG. That's kind of obvious. Spreading awareness of Gwent in key territories to drive up interest in... Whenever it says the company, they're just referring to CG Project. It, you, you'll see it capitalized like that. That's just financial statement speak. Uh, they're trying to comp market Gwent with earlier rich, uh, Witcher themed products to spread awareness of Gwent. Uh, pay, uh, here they talk about single pl um, player campaigns which will be part of the official release of Gwent. And they're saying 27... Um, so the first quarter, the first and second quarter of 2017 this year will depend on the brand's monetization of, like, they're basically saying that Gwent is the big focus of CG Project Red for the first two quarters of this. So right now, this is their big focus. Not their development focus, but their marketing and brand monetization. Again, C, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is still a ways off. They're doing development on that. Gwent is now. For CG project. Uh, here, this is some of the interesting things if you want to look at CG project from a, a long period of time. So we go back to quarter two, so summer of 2011. That's when Witcher 2 came out. Not really all that big. Uh, they came out, that came out on PC, then on Xbox 360 it came out. Let's move this over here. Uh, it came out on um, Xbox 360 in the summer of 2012, so about a whole year later, Xbox got it. Then they're developing Witcher 3, this whole section. Witcher 3 is a huge, huge, you know, like it just hits the market like, like a rocket. 
crater, meteorite into the market of gaming. Um, huge amount of money that it made, and this is in Polish monies. So, uh, and they're still making money after it. So it's summer 2015. General theme of CG Project is they release games in the summer, and I expect Gwent will follow suit and be released in the summer, and Cyberpunk 2077 will be released in the summer. The only exception is if Hearthstone does an aggressive summer campaign to push out competition, in which case Gwent might be pushed off or made earlier just so that it can avoid competing directly with the launch of some new expansion, Hearthstone. It's not, un it's not unheard of for uh, a major competitor for Hearthstone to do that. I think that um, Shadowverse does it too to kind of avoid stepping on um, having Hearthstone um, weaken its sale numbers at a new release. They release their stuff at a slightly different window. Uh, you can see that the expansions for Witcher 3 had huge sales too. They blow Witcher 2 out of the water, just the sales volume around the expansion dates. So this um, pro uh, this financial statements right here on the uh, fall of 2016. I know it looks like late sem um, late summer, but it's it's fall as far as financial statements are concerned, or third quarter. If we look at GOG.com, they have this. This is their money. So quarter two during the summer, that's when they make most of their money, just like CD Projekt Red makes most of its money during the summer. It makes the least amount of money in September, uh, the third quarter, which is right here. You can actually see that they did better than in quarter one. It's probably because they're still making money, and some of this money is probably going to come from the fact that a lot of people now know about Witcher 3. And they're still selling stuff after the release of the a really good expansion. Uh, it's required in consolidated financial statements to include the fact that you have major suppliers and clients. Uh, if it's more than 10%, they're going to include it. They have four clients that are more than 10% of all their sales. And yeah, they can't. They don't tell you who the client is because that's private information. But when they say client, they're probably referring to corporations, not like a single individual. Nobody's buying that many Witcher three games. That would be hilarious if one person was buying twenty five percent of all the Witcher three games they ever sold. <laughs> uh, the rest of this isn't necessary for you guys to know, so we're going to skip all the way to the bottom. And. If you want to read that stuff, you can. It's a lot of just, it's a lot of numbers, and I don't want you guys to focus on the numbers unless you're really interested in financial statements or an accountant or something like me. So that's it. Glad to uh, have talked about this. I hope this stuff is enlightening for you, as it was for me. There's a lot of stuff to be unpacked in here, of course. Uh, I skimmed it as much as possible because the video would be like three hours long as if I went into it in detail. So in summary, GOG is part of CG Project. You can support Gwent from just you know going to their game shows and stuff like that. They're looking at those numbers as a sign of success. They usually release stuff in the summer Witcher 2 was released in the summer, both the PC and the Xbox 360 both in the summer, uh, or second quarter. May is usually the time I see, uh, like Witcher 3 came out in May, and their Blood and Wine expansion came out in May, so you can kind of expect this pattern to continue. With Gwent, uh, so I think an open beta will be a month before that. Yeah. So, again, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be trying to release some actual Gwent content in a couple of days, but I need some inspiration. So, yeah. Bye.